Hey, how you doing? It's Sunday and I'm thinking about a busy week at work. Part of that process, reading the papers, having some lunch, relaxing. Another part is just really thinking about what am I wear for the working week and what shoes I might wear. Now shoes were the first big black hole that I looked down in all of this. So when you talk about shoes, we have to talk about maintenance of and care of the very same. So I'm going to start today with a pair of these. This is a Black Oxford's lovely, lovely cat toe from Crockett and Jones. Business, strictly business, great pair of shoes. Now, key, key things when you're looking at your shoes is if you can, get some trees in there. Simple idea, the reason being you're out on a busy day, you're back, sitting down. Before you do, take the shoes off, put the trees back in there, put them in their dust bags, put them back from whence they first came. What tends to happen is uh, beech or cedar, whatever it is that those are made, up, made from, will draw the moisture from your busy day out of the shoe, which maintains the life of them. These will outlive me when looked after really, really well. The other key thing is before starting, I'll give a brush down just to get rid of any dust that's on there whatsoever. I'll also give it a rub over with some black polish with a brush. brush. Um, what some guys tend to forget is they don't pay attention to the edging. Um, there's nothing really worse than seeing somebody that's looked after their shoe, but lets themselves down with a rough, rough edge, if you like. Whatever you've got in front of you, just go with it. Just put a faint, a faint line across with some polish just as all that. That's before we start this process. Now, what I might do is get myself a rag of some sort. This happens to be in a relatively new Edward Green one that I picked up and a product or two. Now, I've gone with one that happens to be this one. This is a mirror gloss, so it's going to give me every assistance that I like. I like that. Um, quite simple. I've gone with this round my fingers. I'm a two finger guy. Now, you might be three fingers. You pay your money, you take your choice. Now, what I'm going to do is just put the faintest amounts on that of the mirror gloss. Okay, the faintest amounts. And the reason being is that less is more. The more products that you put on in order to get you where you want to go actually delays you in that task. Okay, the less that you put on does exactly the job that you want in double quick time. Okay, so what I'm doing is I've put that faintest amount on my rag or cloth and I'm making the smallest of circular movements across the whole of the cat toe. Going round quite deliberately with little or no pressure. The more pressure that you're putting on there, you're putting more pressure on that leather so you can delay the process even more. Now, I'm just hurrying through that just to give you a, an idea. Now, the more times that you do this, that you follow this whole process, you're going to find that you potentially end up like a guard on parade. Much respect to those gentlemen because they are top of the class. They know exactly what they're doing. So this is the decision for you. Where do you go on that spectrum? Now, if you want to go all the way up there, it's about repeating this process. Little is more being the key. If you just want to make a difference, um, for me, not for anybody else, what I want to do is just to make that, that cap toe, if you like, look a wee bit different from the rest of the leather. So I wouldn't necessarily buff this at all. I'd just leave that with its polish, just wipe any residue off, and then concentrate on the cap toe because that gives that markedly, market difference, if, if you will. So I'm just doing that and that wax is going on there, and it's what's actually happening is some form of chemical reaction, because the warmth from your fingers, so a three-finger guy might win out, um, is actually helping the wax get in there within the grain of the leather. That's what we're looking to do, is to actually cover the, the whole of the cap toe, if you like, so it's one uniform piece, okay? So we're doing that. Now, the next part of this two-part process might even be two and a half, is to add some liquid. Now you can make a trip to where you can get water from. And sometimes what I do is I put a few drops within the lid of my product, dab it in there and move on. Alternatively, you can put that water into a diffuser. Um, I have a diffuser, 
but it's an ornament because I don't use it. Uh, I either do that or I use this. Now, I do beg your pardon. There we go. Just the smallest of amounts that goes onto there. Just the smallest of amounts. And what we're looking to do is to follow the same process through. Okay, so it's small circular movements with little or no pressure. Little or no pressure indeed. And what you'll find after just a short space of time, just a few moments, getting into a minute or two, is you'll notice that the wax that you've used, the saliva or water that you used with that heat actually helps to start to get that shine to come through. Once again, the amount of times that you do it will improve upon that shine. So it's entirely up to you where you go. If you want to expedite that process, something of the warmth or the moisture from your breath will help too. So just every now and again, if you just don't want to put any more water or saliva in there, just try this. There we go. And then that helps too. Really brings it up. And it's, it is quite a quick process. Now you'll see lots of tips on how to do this and everyone will be good. Not all of them are right, but everyone tend to be good because you'll see the end process. I'm just looking to demonstrate to you that you can do this quite quickly, quite easily, with no stress whatsoever. Now, as you can see, I can see, and I hope you can too, that yeah, I've got that into there. There's certainly a difference and I'm pleased with that. Now, if I wanted to do a little bit of a cheat, a little bit of a trick, right at the end of the process, what I might do is, when the, when the better half has finished cleaning the windows and has secreted away this, because I like it and I find it, I will use it. It's a chamois leather. I've done what I need to do. My final bit would be just to go over the top of there with the chamois leather. Now, just finish that off there. And what you'll find is the oils within that chamois help along with that process. That's the other chemical element or chemical reaction that's at play here. And if you were to ask me what those chemical uh, reactions are, then I'd refer you to Google, because I don't know, I just happen to know that it works, okay? So there we go. Once again, it's just taken up a notch, just taken up. Do like these, strictly business. Now, just to illustrate my point and to show you a couple of other examples, what I'm gonna do, is show you this for example now this is the inverness really lovely shoe it's an inverness by edward green now these lasts are last specific so the shoe is built on a specific last so that shape if you like that's built in a particular way to a particular pattern constructed excellently and what they've done is they made the last match exactly that so when you reinsert the last into that at the end of the busy day it perfectly does the job it's intended to do these will outlive me do like the inverness classy color burnished toe across the top a little bit of black in there really really works well you can put any polish on any shoe pretty much and it'll be a temporary thing okay to illustrate that point now this might be a step too far for a couple of you i've got uh here now, this is the inimitable Pembroke from Crockett & Jones, naturally. A great, great country brogue. Perfect for the oncoming autumn and winter months. Really good. Had these for many, many years. These are a go-to. Really good. Now, I've elected to put that cap shine, if you like, that mirror shine across the top. Not too much, because your miles might vary, and you're thinking it's a country shoe. Let's have it looking like a country shoe. That's fine. My point being, that won't last forever, and if you don't like it, having given it a try, it easily comes off. Easily comes off. Do like that, like the grain that's in there. Great, great shoe. Great with cords, great with flannels. Excellent. Now, moving back to Edward Green. I do like a Dover. A Norwegian split toe. Really do like these by Edward Green. Again, less specifics trees that are in there excellent now this is what i call the deadly nightshade they call it the nightshade um yeah it's just an excellent shoe really like a dark plum if you like very understated understated elegance all day again what i would do completely at the end of the day just take them off put the trees back in give them a wipe ready for next time because i don't need to do this laborious process day in day out that will last me quite some time quite some time it's just a quick finish with one of these and we're good to go in conclusion 
Um, I have a rather beautiful pair, in my humble opinion, of St. Crispin's, equally. Norwegian split toe, in Russian calf. Hope you can see the grain there. Very much last specific trees that are in there too. Excellent pair of shoes, really do enjoy those. Now, key, key thing, I use this process essentially just because I enjoy it, just because I enjoy looking after things that I've worked hard to, to buy and to enjoy too. So often on a Sunday, I might partake in a glass as I'm doing that. Yeah, I do like a lock fine whiskey. That winds up my weekend on occasion, just every now and again, not every Sunday, but it's an enjoyable time just to reflect on, yeah, I like that. I like the craftsmanship. I like everything about it. I'd also like to hear what your experiences are, any questions that you have. It'd be really good to hear from you.